Imagine a universe of unblemished perfection, a cosmos vibrating with harmonious love, untouched by grief, pain, or discord. Now picture the exact opposite, a reality scarred by sin and suffering. How did this drastic transformation come about? The origin of sin is one of the most profound mysteries in theology, posing significant questions about God's nature and the purpose of human existence. Understanding where sin comes from, why it persists, and how it affects our relationship with the divine is not merely an academic exercise. It is essential for navigating the moral complexities of life. This exploration invites us to grapple with difficult questions, encouraging a deeper engagement with our beliefs and values. Sin, fundamentally, is described in the Bible as any action, thought or attitude that contradicts God's law and character. Theologically, it poses a dilemma. How can an omnipotent, omniscient and benevolent God permit the existence of sin? Classical theology has its suggestion for sin's existence, but even Christians find themselves questioning God's grace, justice and mercy and the moral and spiritual development of humanity. Have you ever wondered where sin originated? From the dawn of humanity, it has cast a long shadow, shaping the course of civilizations and leaving an indelible mark on the human experience. In this enlightening video, we embark on a captivating journey to uncover the origins of sin, exploring its profound impact on the world as we know it. Some believe the Creator created, then left His creation unattended. Prepare to investigate this age-old concept, presented with clarity and simplicity for all to comprehend. Like a creeping vine, sin entered our world, disrupting the harmony of God's perfect design. It was never meant to be a part of creation, an unwelcome intruder into the paradise God had crafted. The book of Genesis tells the story of how sin entered the world through the disobedience of Adam and Eve. Tempted by the serpent, they chose to disregard God's command, and in that act of defiance, sin gained a foothold. But wait! This is not the actual beginning of the story. We seem to have missed something. Let's rewind a bit. In the vast, serene expanse of the universe, before time as we know it, there existed a perfect harmony, a divine symphony orchestrated by the omnipotent Creator. The realm of heaven was a realm of pure light, untainted by darkness, where celestial beings worshipped and served God out of love and free will. At the pinnacle of this divine hierarchy was Christ, the only begotten Son, who with the Father created all things. By him were all things created that are in heaven, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers as seen in Colossians 1.16. Peace reigned supreme and every being reveled in the radiance of God's love. Yet within this tapestry of celestial glory, an insidious shadow began to form. This shadow was not from without, but from within, festering in the heart of the most exalted of the angels. Lucifer, the anointed cherub that covereth, was a being of unmatched beauty and wisdom, created to be a vessel of divine splendor. Ezekiel 28 verses 12 to 15 says about Lucifer, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden the garden of God, every precious stone was thy covering. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. But Lucifer's beauty became his downfall. In the quiet chambers of his heart, he began to covet the position of Christ, whispering to himself, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High, records Isaiah 14 verses 13 to 14. Pride twisted his thoughts and soon his wisdom was corrupted, as again found in Ezekiel 28 verse 17, Lucifer's heart was lifted up because of his beauty. He had corrupted his wisdom by reason of his brightness. What began as a whisper grew into a chilling resolve. The purity of his devotion soured into a dangerous ambition. In the celestial courts, the angels could sense a change. Lucifer, once a beacon of light, now cast long, foreboding shadows. He moved among the ranks of the heavenly hosts, spreading seeds of discontent. With silver-tongued eloquence, he questioned God's fairness, insinuating that the divine law was an arbitrary restriction, stifling their potential. Is God's law just? Are we, the exalted beings of heaven, not capable of governing ourselves? His questions were poison, sweetened with the promise of liberation. The once harmonious chorus of heaven began to falter, notes of discord weaving through the melody. 
Lucifer's rebellion grew, and he drew many angels to his side, their minds entangled in his deceit. The tension in heaven became palpable, a mounting dread that something unspeakable was about to unfold. Did you know that God had a meeting to set things straight? Yes, in his infinite patience and love, God convened a great council. The angels, numbering 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, according to the book of Revelation in the 11th verse of chapter 5, gathered around the throne. The most exalted angels as ministers and subjects rejoicing in the light that fell upon them from the presence of God. Before the assembled inhabitants of heaven, the king declared that none but Christ, the only begotten of God, could fully enter into his purposes, and to him it was committed to execute the mighty counsels of his will. The Almighty declared the position of his Son, reaffirming Christ's authority. Among the vast number of angels, Lucifer was there, his radiant form now a vessel of defiance. He bowed with the others, but his heart burned with rage. God pleaded with Lucifer, he had numerous opportunities to turn away from this evil that had now made a home within him. Despite God's warnings and the pleadings of the loyal angels, Lucifer refused to repent. The darkness within him solidified, a malignant force that sought to overthrow the divine order. The time came when God would no longer tolerate the festering rebellion. Lucifer and his followers were cast out of heaven, their fall a cataclysmic event that shook the very foundations of the cosmos. As told in Revelation 12, 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Banished to the earth, Lucifer, now Satan, seethed with hatred and vowed to corrupt the newly created world. His deception led humanity to fall, bringing sin and death into the world. The once perfect creation now groaned under the weight of sin. Death, suffering and decay became the new order. The cosmic conflict had spilled into the earthly realm and the war between good and evil raged on. God's response to sin was not immediate destruction but a profound plan of redemption. Jesus, the very Son of God, would come to earth, live a sinless life and die to save humanity. This sacrifice would demonstrate God's justice and love offering a way for the fallen to be restored. The Apostle Paul, writing centuries later, echoes this narrative in his letter to the Romans. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people, because all sinned, he writes, emphasizing the far-reaching consequences of that first transgression. Sin, once a distant whisper, had announced its presence, casting a long shadow over all creation. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. Satan's rebellion and the origin of sin reveal a terrifying truth about the nature of evil. It began in the most exalted place with the highest of beings, and it now seeks to corrupt and destroy all that is good. Was God's decision to allow sin to continue justified? For sin to appear as it really is, it had to be fully developed, yet it also reveals the depths of God's love and his commitment to justice and mercy. The origins of sin remain an enigma, truly impossible to explain fully, yet we can grasp enough about its beginnings and ultimate fate to appreciate the justice and benevolence of God in dealing with evil. When sin entered, there was no abrupt withdrawal of divine grace, nor any flaw in his impeccable governance that prompted rebellion. Sin is a rogue force, an uninvited guest for which no justification can be provided. Its presence is both perplexing and inexplicable. To make excuses for it is to defend it. If a reason for its existence could be found, it would cease to be sin. As we reflect on the events that have unfolded, we are left with one haunting question. What might have happened if God had destroyed Satan and his gang in that very moment, knowing the eternal stakes of this celestial conflict? What do you think?